I like one of the stupidest things I had a girl say to me. And the crazy thing was, she's one of the prettiest girls I've ever hired. Yeah. Like stunning. And I go in the dressing room, and she's like, "Hey, I have to call my ride to come get me. Do you know what you know? Do you know what time it is?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's it's three o'clock." She goes, "Okay, cool." <laughs> I was like, "Is she farting? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's happening?" And she goes, "So like, what time is it going to be in half an hour?" <laughs> but thank and, uh, Stormy, thank you for being here today. No, thanks for having me. I, I read, I just read your book, and the very beginning, you talk about how nervous you are to public speak, for example. That's why, yeah. So, like, you're on this storytelling tour now. Why, why are you doing that? Um, well, why are you calling it a storytelling tour? Because it's not stand up. <laughs> Do you consider it stand up? No. I thank okay. you, boo. That's all why. right. All right. That's we were we were trying to debate like who called it stand up. Was it someone who organized for you or? Um, no, I just think it was because it's in a comedy club. That's I mean, what I they said. Just assumed, yeah. you know what I mean? Shrod, you're so yeah. smart. Yeah, <laughs> and because uh, I know you don't want to disrespect comedians who've been doing it for not. years. Wait, 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 wait. No. We'll, we'll get there, but <laughs> but you're so nervous to get on stage. Why why are you doing these storytelling shows? I'll admit it's easier now because I've been going on stage and I've had to kind of overcome that fear of speaking and and whatnot. So it's not as terrifying as it would have been if you asked me to do this, you know, right. 10, 15 years ago when I was 12. <laughs> um, but it was just, honestly, I had this idea to write a book a long time ago because the craziest stuff happens to me. Oh, God. What, like Obvi what? <laughs> really? Give me one story. What, what rock one. have you been under? I've been under a couple rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Um, but then when you know they had me actually write the book, they weren't interested in all that great, funny stuff that I'd accumulated. And I was like, I don't really want to do another book. It's, you know, so I was like, what am I do with all these like great, funny yet true stories? And some people were like, oh, you should, you know, do speaking. And do you know what this person gets for this? I'm like, okay, no one's gonna pay me that much to not put something in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And so I just I was That's like, oh, funny. This, this might be kind of cool to do this. And but I was very adamant about like it's it's not comedy. I don't have jokes written. I actually had one joke writ it. written for that night, and I can only I can't ever use it again. Why? Because it was. Only relative to that. Of that first night? Yeah. Okay, what was it? Oh, I just <laughs> went on stage and was like, well, this is really cool. I never got to, they all had to say this again. Be gentle, it's my first time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's like the only thing that I was like, oh, that's okay. kind of funny. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> the rest of it was just, you know, stories. And um, the same thing that I'm going to do here, we passed out note cards. Okay. So people could ask questions. Did you keep a journal throughout your career, writing down all these stories, or yes, you had to write everything down? But after. you also yeah. have a very good memory. You have a photographic memory. I do, but I did actually write down um, because one of the parts that I wanted to put in my book was like the stupid things. I called it stripper quotes, but some of it was on set and whatnot. All these like things that like overheard girls saying, like in dressing rooms or to me or on set. You know, and I hate to paint the stereotype because some of the smartest women I've met are in the adult business. On yeah. the flip side of that, mm. some of the dumbest girls you met. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> like, what's what's some of the dumb things you hear them say? Oh my God! It's just like some of these girls are like, "How did you find your way to set today? Like, literally, <laughs> how did you? Did you just? Did I hire you, or did you just wander in here? Like, because <laughs> what?" I like one of the stupidest things I had a girl say to me. And sh the crazy thing was, she's one of the prettiest girls I've ever hired. Yeah. Like, stunning. And I go in the dressing room, and she's like, Hey, I have to call my ride to come get me. Do you know what, you know, do you know what time it is? And I was like, Yeah, it's, it's three o'clock. And she goes, Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, Is she farting? <laughs> what's, ha what's happening? And she goes, So, like, what time is it going to be in half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That really happened wow that's, yeah, so that's like, comedy i mean did but you send that girl home or did but you like action who cares <laughs> i was like good thing you're pretty with a penis in you oh ah, there you go so so somewhere for everybody i guess yeah yeah so she had other skills is what you're saying thankfully <laughs> now you're going uh, where you where is this tour going it's going everywhere no um, how many cities you're hitting oh gosh uh like seven or eight i think and do you feel like it's some uh, somewhat different in the south or in a like a, compared to the north or the west? Or? Are we talking about in general or yeah, doing that? like doing your show, doing your stand-up. Like where was the last stop? I've only you? done it once. Oh, really? So yeah. where, And then where was that? In, in Kentucky? Houston. In, in Houston. Houston. Yeah. That's the Houston show. I was in Kentucky, you know, the night before last. Oh, it was, doing it was dancing. Stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally different. And like tomorrow night, I think I'm in 
Binghamton, New York, or Providence, and it's dancing. Do you know, when you're it? dancing, do you stop the dancing and do bits in between? <laughs> Hell no. Okay, because that would ruin a boner. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. How, Nobody? How, how many do you, <laughs> the storytelling tour, do you, you see yourself doing a lot of them? Do you enjoy it? I don't know yet. This is only the second one. Okay. And like I said, I don't remember the first time. <laughs> and did you did you get advice from from people? I did, and that was like um, kind of the cool part because when it was first announced, comedians lost their shit. On yeah, me. we had a meeting. I, yeah, I did got you an have email. A yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were angry. All like, the women comedians were furious. Yeah, yeah, like super angry. Not like, us. So we, much we for supported. that whole woman power <laughs> thing. Oh no, that's why Hillary lost. Because <laughs> they hate each other. <laughs> Girls, yeah, they're vicious. Yeah, what did they say? What were? I... I mean, they were just all bent out of shape, and I, you know, that I was doing this, and I was taking slots away from people, and I mean, and I never said I was doing comedy. I'm not. I'm not a stand-up comedian. I know how hard that is. I have friends that are comedians, and like. Thank you. I consider us friends too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I would never be disrespectful. Me claiming to be a comedian would be like you posting a picture of your butthole on, on Instagram tonight and saying you're a porn star. So you know my account. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would consider Shroud a porn star if he was, uh, <laughs> well, maybe not with just a photo. I got a taxable butthole, though. You say my butthole can, uh, what, take it could, the camera? It could be a very lucrative butthole. Maybe okay. it was a bad example. I don't know. Okay. So it, what if... But anyway, they were all been out of shape about it, and... Um, attacking me online or whatever, which was great because it gave me it gave me material. <laughs> but like some of the, like the biggest comedians, like Kathy Griffin and Tim Meadows, they you know they messaged me and gave me some really great advice. Oh, that's great. What, yeah. what advice did Kathy Griffin give? Um, she said, um, no offense, she said never have an opener. <laughs> <laughs> never have an opener. Why? Of course. Uh, why? I wonder. Uh, actually, she had a legitimate point. She said, "You don't want to have to follow um, it." She's. No, she said a lot of places would be tempted to put a woman in front of you. Oh. And you might have some of the same jokes. Yeah. Or anybody who goes up ahead of you might take the low road and, mm. and like, bash porn. And then when you go up, yeah. you'll be tempted to defend yourself, and that'll take away from your Yeah, set. if you have an opener, you, know? you should be able to pick your own opener. You should, yeah, you should not have a You should always pick, pick your own fluffer. Yeah, thank you. We need T-shirts. <laughs> did you, after the joke joint performance, did you change up any material? Or you're going with the same stories? I don't you don't remember. I don't so, okay, let's say... It, Some it, of it will be the same. A lot of it also depends on the questions I get. Okay. L okay. Let's say everybody on the questions asks about Trump and you don't want to mm -hmm. talk about that. What will you do? Um, I'll answer questions. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> but, but <laughs> What was it like? <laughs> she, what was it like? For twenty four ninety nine, you can buy the book. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on a... Did you read the it was Audible? <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Did you do your own... I didn't. Can you watch the book? Oh, somebody else talking. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Watch you reading the book. Oh, watch me read yeah. the book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went someplace way more disturbing. <laughs> All right. I, so. I, I have a super serious question, actually. So what do you think of the, I feel like a lot of people compared your incident with the Me Too movement, uh -huh. and you've specifically separated it out. What do, you, what do you think of the Me Too movement? What do you think of people comparing it? I don't know. Are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm trying to get me in trouble. That's fucked up. Um, I was very adamant about separating it, because it's, it's not. Like, there was, I wasn't forced, I wasn't in danger, I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was definitely not a Me Too thing. My only mistake was that I didn't say, fuck this, I'm out. But that was on me. Like, it was not a Me Too thing. And I didn't want to be tied to that because I think it took away from actual Me Too victims. Respect. You know R what I mean? That right, and so do you think a lot of the Me Too stories that we do here also takes away from real victims who are a secretary working in an office right. and who doesn't have the, the power or the clout or the money to really, you know make a whole news story about it. I think the Me Too movement started with really, really great intentions and has been very empowering and has done a lot of good. But on the other side, this is what's gonna get me in trouble, all the women are gonna beat me up later. Hmm. Um, I think that it's gone a bit too far and people people will ruin anything. Like, yeah. literally, they will ruin anything. And some people have used it as an excuse for making their own bad choices and that's very unfortunate. And um, I used to really wanna be a guy. 
Like I used to be like, why was I born without a dick? <laughs> like you can write your name in the snow <laughs> without getting in your socks. Like you made up for that though. You collecting you know? them now, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody on Mine's that detachable. one. Mine's <laughs> detachable. <laughs> I have lots of dicks. Mine are all I know. detachable. <laughs> but black I, and in a drawer. <laughs> the black one's on the nightstand, baby. There you go. Respect. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Kwanzaa. Because it doesn't it doesn't fit in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You know I love you, right? <laughs> You're giving um, him material. We're a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sherrod Shira- can open for you now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, I just feel like, you know, now is a very scary time to have a penis that isn't detachable. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. Scary because it's just kind of this, uh, I don't know, backlash against men after the past 10 million years or. Yeah, yeah it's like the man haters club out there. It's pretty scary. Yeah. I don't know. So, a lot of those like really hardcore me too feminists are, are seriously fucking it up. I have to buy my own drinks now. <laughs> like it used to be guys will come up and hit on you and buy you a drink and now they're all terrified. So yeah, so do you think like people are uh, assuming masculinity also automatically means toxic? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Not, like, because like being masculine, a oh, man would offer a woman to, to buy the drink. Yeah. But... Now everybody's saying, oh, it's, it's everybody, everybody who's masculine, it's like toxic masculinity. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just misplaced anger, you know what I mean? And hopefully it balances out in the end. You know, women are feeling empowered, and it's kind of a new thing, and that's really great. And I think it's done a lot of really awesome stuff. But for me personally, I, going back to your original question, I was very adamant about being separated from that because I didn't want to take any attention away from actual victims right and there are so many out there i mean it's you know but i i don't think men are monsters i like men thank you <laughs> I like how you looked at me after you said that too <laughs> well, we're a thing well i thought we were a thing <laughs> thank you okay what, what, I mean, what are some let's get the word uh, out so so later on tonight uh, some of the audience will be asking you questions mm-hmm. what are some of the your favorite questions that you like talk you know, that you like fielding um well i've only done this once so it's kind of like hard to say I guess my only reference for that is just in the years I've been in the adult business, like the questions I get asked the most, Mm -hmm. which I'm, well, I'm sure they'll be in there tonight. Have I had sex with Ron Jeremy? Have you? First of all, offended that you'd even ask. Why? We're not a thing anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Um, you and Ron Jeremy aren't a thing? It was too fast. (laughs) That either. That was the quickest. But Ron's been around for the longest though. (laughs) Um, I almost banged Ron Jeremy. That's how long he's been in business. (laughs) <laughs> that was your out loud voice. Um, or, and or Jenna Jameson. Um, what's, are the at, orgasms real in movies? Um, how, what am I going to tell my daughter about porn? And uh, what's the biggest dick I've ever had in my ass? I had an actual lady, a very elderly lady, asked me that in yeah. Macy's. She wanted to know if you broke her record. I was, <laughs> so, I was like, what the fuck? Also, respect. So wait, did she, was this in the past year, this elderly? No, no, that was actually a really long time ago. So she knew who you were? This yeah, and lady. she started the conversation by asking, I hate to bother you, are you Stormy? Yeah, you know, my husband and I watch you on Playboy channels. This was, you know, quite a while ago. Um, I just got asked. You know, she was like, do you do this? And my husband really wants to, but he has a really big pe- I was like, how old are you? <laughs> yeah, but the other part of me was like, is this me? And like, you know, <laughs> is this like a ghost of Christmas past <laughs> fucked up thing going on in Macy's? I don't know. But anyway, I went on to have a very disturbingly interesting conversation with someone's grandmother at Macy's. So what's the biggest? <laughs> <laughs> in my ass? Yeah. It's on my nightstand. Oh, the black one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I just pass out? Do you, do you have a, do you have a favorite uh, scene? A favorite scene? The, the most. Oh, in, um, you, most do you like girl on girl, scene. guy and girl? Yes. Both. Yes. Okay. Do you like producing more than you like? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. I writing and directing is way more fun. Yeah. Because I'm a control freak. Control freak. Now, do you star in your own movies that you direct as well? The and you yell cut when your legs are spread open? All the time. Because somebody's missing a shot? Yep. <laughs> Make a cameo. You're a multitasker. <laughs> yep. Control freak. If you want something done right, do it yourself. Right. I've probably directed 90% of the movies I'm in. Really? Yep. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Is it enjoyable or Directing? all the, time, all the uh, starring in? Is it? Does it feel like work more than um, you enjoy it? It's like having a job that you really love, but some days still suck. You know what I mean? Like it's comedy. Maybe you are a stand-up. <laughs> 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 I 
Except there's actual sucking. Oh, yeah. That's the unless, there's, unless there's something I don't know about tonight. Well, you got to get spots sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you got to suck something. But yeah, you know, everybody has jobs that some days you don't feel like going or yeah. you don't feel good or you just don't want to be hungover. Yeah. That, this or, is called Tuesday know. for Sherrod. That's right. So. <laughs> Do you try to like uh, sleep a lot before you shoot, or get water, hydrate? Uh, what's your What's your routine? I, I don't have one. You don't have a routine. You just jump no. right in there. Yeah. And high five and yell action. One two three fuck. One two three fuck. <laughs> T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel like in the past year, when people come up to you now with questions, are you a little bit more apprehensive? Like, okay, they're gonna ask about other things other than what you've been doing for the past. You know? Um. Actually, strangely enough, people approach me less maybe because i have a very you know large man standing <laughs> over me these days but i think they're almost yeah, that dude a, a from game of thrones you brought that motherfucker in from <laughs> came from Wait, the north you, wall you, did he <laughs> if you didn't have a security guard are you, are you nervous um if you asked me that question a year, a year ago or even six months ago i would definitely say yes right but it just hasn't happened like i haven't really had any bad experiences uh in real life you know all, all the you know, all the big talkers are online. I have, I have one Trump question. Uh, was there a pillow talk? No. There, very little communication. Yeah. Well, are you talking about like in bed or in general? In bed. Oh, yeah, no. No? Wow. It was just orders? Orders. Like, what did he say? Did he request things? Like, french fries? No. <laughs> like, Do you call it french fries? That actually might have happened. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Do no, you I'm call kidding. it french fries? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Like, did he ask for like what he wanted? No, 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 no. he didn't say anything. Okay. Well, where do I go from there? <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, what questions do people ask you when they come up to you? They don't really come up to me and ask me questions anymore. I guess, let's see. Like initially, when, when, when at right after 60 Minutes, was there like... Um, the only questions somebody would ask me if they, you know, were, were to approach me were, were like genuine concern, like... It, they would offer support, and then they would say, like, are you okay? You know, just stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And where are you from? Where did you grow up? Louisiana. Did you? Uh-huh. Southern girl, huh? Yep. Baton where about? Rouge. Baton Rouge. See? Baton Rouge. Got to read her book. Baton Rouge. Baton. And you agent. went to high school there as well? Uh-huh. Okay. And do you ever go back and, uh, like, weird dudes from your high school be like, yes, I saw your work. <laughs> I've been down your grandmama house. I saw what you be doing. <laughs> Anybody do that weird shit? Not people I actually went to school with. I right. went to a pretty small school. I went to a magnet school, and I'm still friends with a lot of the people from my class. Okay. You know what I mean? So not people from my actual school. The what, weird the thing is that, like, people who went to other schools claiming that we're, like, related or we dated. Or, oh. like, like, wait, what? She my cousin. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> especially weird when they also say we dated, but. Yeah. yeah, but it's Southern, so Be- before, <laughs> it's possible. Before you got into the industry, did you have uh, a different career aspiration? Did yeah, you... I wanted to be a veterinarian. I knew I was going to say veterinarian. <laughs> oh, I swear to God, I was just going to say it. So you read one sentence in the oh, book. Oh, <laughs> I was just feeling it off. You like animals, don't you? Yeah. All right. Do you have pets now? <laughs> yeah. I have two dogs and eight horses. Eight horses? Uh-huh. What level of white are you? <laughs> <laughs> eight horses? You're an equestrian? <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a high level of white. I, I am pu- uh, pumpkin spice latte white. Uh, so what do you think about that Kentucky Derby uh, decision? I was there. I saw it. Were you? Yeah. You had the big hat on? Yeah. Were you like shocked that they <laughs> took, the, took it away from uh, yeah, and maximum I, security? Yeah. I think that they were a little harsh. Yeah, uh, but if you actually look at it, it wasn't the jockey's fault. The horse spooked. Yeah, it spooked from one of the crowd. Yeah. He was a young horse. Yeah, he, he and spooked. he's a mother. His mother's a mother. But he <laughs> did he did cross. So on black and white, he did come to, across yeah. a little. Yeah. So I'm conflicted on it. Yeah. Like it sucks. I'm just glad that I wasn't the jockey that day because he had a really bad night. I'm sure. Yeah, there's a lot of crying. What Poor got what fella. got you into horseback riding? I don't know. Nobody in my family rides. It was just something. It was just something recently that, that no, you I started into? riding when I was eleven, but I've loved uh, horses since uh, I, I, was, I was born. Riding, I was I born with else. that disease. <laughs> you are so nasty. I mean, you, I, nobody else in my family rides. I'm like, there's more about the riding. <laughs> saddle or no saddle? I like it all. It's cr- thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that between us? <laughs> do you feel? Are, it? are we back together? We're back together. <laughs> we made up. All right, all right. Do, guys, do guys ask you out all the time? No. They're scared of her. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> Not the kid. 
Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> so, let's say you're giving, a, um, okay, we're, we're going to wind it up, but I have a question. If you're giving advice to someone who was in your situation in 2006, mm -hmm. what would you say now would be the, kind of like looking with the perspective that you have now, what would have been the right thing to do? Or not the right thing, but what would you advise someone to do? Run. Run. Not go to the room, not uh, run once there was the silk pajamas. What, which part, where, where does the running start? Instantly. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't do it, I don't know. I, I can't, I mean, there's so many factors to that question. I mean, is it just any guy who hits on you? Is it, you know, I don't know. Well, here was, I guess this was a situation where you were expecting some kind of business opportunity, right? Because maybe celebrity apprentice um, or. That's not why I said yes. Mm -hmm. I just said yes because I thought it was, was weird. And I was <laughs> ridiculously naive back then yeah. and didn't, you know, like didn't think that it was anything other than what I was told it was. And then, you know, I got in there and he was such a fucking asshole, like weirdo that I was like, oh, I'm going to, no pun intended, don't get excited. Okay. I am going to ride this out. Yeah. yeah. Last, I already enjoyed last, it. Sorry. La, 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 last question. Do you, do, you, do you need a towel? I do. Two oh. towels. <laughs> la, last, last question. Um, who, which candidates do you like out, out there now? Oh, I don't know yet. You don't know? No. Can you give us a few people that you like? No, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's too early to tell. Because every time I say top, I like somebody, five. they do something fucked up. So oh, I'm forget, not jinxing it. No. Don't forget, you, but what, you were going to run for office, uh, right? Uh, I forget now. In 2009. Louisiana. Yeah, the, for, for Senate. Senate, U.S. Senate, yeah. Uh, for Republican, on the Republican side, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and I got scarily close to winning, so I got the fuck out of there. Really? Yeah. Stormy, thanks for coming, and good luck downstairs tonight. That sounds so dirty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow.